everyone. I am finally here in Davis. Thank you so much for waiting, praying, and persevering with us from last September to May. Today in our Friday briefing, I wanted to share a little bit about what my first few days in Davis have been like and share just one thing that I've been thinking about during this time in quarantine. First of all, uh, we are now in our new home. It is pretty bare, uh, our furniture is still coming. Um, but when we came, we were welcomed with flowers and care baskets and gifts and cards and people checking in constantly to see if we needed anything. So we were just so grateful. I mean, people gave of their toilet paper and sanitizers and stuff. And that's like gold these days, right? So um, every time I go to the bathroom, I am reminded of God's generosity and love through DCC. So thank you. And now I want to share just one thing that I've been thinking about during this crisis. Before the quarantine happened, I was kind of living in a pseudo quarantine because when my visa status expired last year and when our petition went in for application, um, I couldn't work and I could not renew my driver's license. So I was kind of already stuck at home. Um, I would occasionally go grocery shopping with Chi or go to gym classes at school. But other than that, I was pretty much spending a lot of time at home. So when the real quarantine happened, it wasn't that much of a dramatic change for me. But I have struggled with the fact that while I experienced minimal discomfort of being at home, others are dying and lack access to healthcare, clean water, food, and aid. Black and brown communities who were already feeling the weight of systems stacked against them even before COVID-19 are disproportionately affected by the crisis. I think about the people who are incarcerated, detained, the unhoused and elderly who do not have access to advocates. The spread of hate crimes against AAPI communities is alarming and black people still won't feel safe wearing masks while black. I struggle with these contrasting realities of my own levels of privilege and the overwhelming brokenness and injustice in the world. So one morning I wrote out these concerns in my journal just to name them because they were so heavy and weighing on my heart and I didn't really know what to do about it. I happened to read Mark 6 about Jesus feeding the 5,000. I mean, it's like a fairy tale, right? Um, there are so many people who need to be fed. This one little boy gives his two fish and five loaves and, and Jesus blesses it and everybody is fed. And wow, I, I, I was cynical approaching the text. I was like, okay, what, what do you have to say, God, um, in this text? While I was reading the text, I did relate with the hunger and desperation and overwhelmed disciples and the anxiety of how do we meet all of these needs? That I could relate with in the story. And in the story, as the hungry and desperate people crowd around Jesus, the disciples rightly ask Jesus, uh, it's late. Please send them away so they, can get, so they can get some food somewhere, Jesus. Then Jesus says this random weird thing. How many loaves have you? I can imagine the disciples' faces just kind of looking at each other in disbelief. Like, did he just ask this question? There are 5,000 people here and you're asking how many loaves have you? As I was reading the story, I felt like God was saying, Envy, 
I'm not asking you to perform miracles. I didn't ask the disciples to feed 5,000 people. I asked, how many loaves have you? If you look at the need, the need will always be endless. But I am asking, what do you have? Because whatever you do, whatever you can share, I will bless it and multiply it. At that moment, I was reminded not to focus only on all the overwhelming needs and injustices in the world and my inability to change much. But rather, the Spirit seemed to say that wherever there was great need and hunger, that Jesus stayed right there with them. Jesus did not turn away the crowds to fend for themselves. In the same way, the God who did not abandon the hungry and the vulnerable continues to be by our side in our moments of faith as well as our moments of despair. Jesus did not give up on the disciples or rebuke them for feeling overwhelmed or anxious. Instead, he showed them another way by blessing and multiplying the small gift of a little child who focused on what he had and what he could do. Jesus showed the disciples a piece of what God is like by feeding them in their fatigue and despair. No matter how great our weariness, our cynicism, hunger, lack of generosity, I hope we can remember that just as Jesus responded with compassion to the desperate crowd, that God will respond with compassion to us in our desperation, in our disbelief and hunger. I don't know where you are in the story today. You may feel worried, cynical, perhaps overwhelmed, anxious like the disciples. Or you may be like the masses, just hungry, tired, weary, desperate, sick. Or you may be feeling a spark of courage like the little boy to offer your two fish and five loaves of bread, whatever that might be. Wherever you are in the story, I trust that the same Christ who did not give up on the desperate crowd or the despairing disciples will be right here with us through the crisis. So I invite you, whenever you have a moment and when the Spirit invites you, to wonder about where you see yourself in this story. Try to suspend any judgment about where you are and let your honest response be your prayer. Pay attention to Christ's call. Have you any loaves? If you need ideas and you feel the spark of generosity to give, there are options such as partnering with organizations such as STAKE, the Short-Term Emergency Aid Committee. You can donate or volunteer for the Yolo County Food Bank. And also you can give to DCC, the Deacons Fund, which will be used for Friday Faith and Food when it resumes. And there will be great need. Or you could brighten someone's day with art or a card or a letter. Look at this one. 
This is by beautiful Hannah who drew this and this really brightened our day. So thank you, Hannah. Whatever it is, I pray that God will bless and multiply every loaf offered by DCC for the healing and wholeness of our world. Happy Friday, folks. Thank you.